Hey friends, what's up? Kevin here from the My Song Today Rock 2000 Today YouTube channel. And today I'm going to be doing a composite review on a band that I first started listening to at the beginning of 2019 and now I kind of want to do a review on them. This is Motionless in White. Alrighty, so for those of you who don't know how these band reviews work, because I haven't done one in a while, let me give you the quick rundown. First section, I'm going to go through my personal history of the band over the past year, because that's when I found out about them, kind of detailing how I've gotten into them and where they stand with me at this point. Then I'm going to go through each of their five studio albums to kind of give you a taste of their music and what I think of their music from each album. Then I will talk about my likes and dislikes from the band specifically. I will follow that up with what my favorite song is from them of all time. And then of course, I'm gonna give them a rating on a scale of zero to 10, and then kind of summarize it all for you to kind of see, you know, if you have a music taste similar to mine, or if you really like what I'm saying, yeah, then you're gonna know if you should check out Motionless and White or not. So, let's go. Alrighty, so my history when it comes to Motionless and White starts all the way back at the beginning of 2019, so it's a little less than a year from now. And it started back in January where one of our original Instagram followers, Evie, yes, she's still a follower, absolutely love the fact that she's still a follower, said, hey, why don't you listen to Motionless and White? And I said, okay, I'll give him a shot. So there in my work computer, open up Spotify, put my earbuds in, listen to the top song on Spotify at the time, which was Voices Off of the Graveyard Shift album. And it was something different that I've heard, and I thought, this kind of gives me a little bit of a Marilyn Manson vibe, plus I looked at what the band looked like, and yeah, you definitely get a Manson vibe off of them. I thought, okay, this is interesting. I enjoyed it. I thought, you know what? Let me give another song a shot. Let's go to song number two, which was Eternally Yours. Now, once I heard Eternally Yours, that's what just hooked me into the band. And I just kept listening to them and listening to them and listening to them. And I really started to get a whole emotions away. And really, they were one of the bands that kind of really started steering me towards the metalcore genre. I did end up seeing them live on their spring 2019 tour with Atreyu. They were the headliner when I saw them in Madison at the Sylvie and that was one of the funnest shows I've been to in 2019 because of how the energy was within the crowd and I think I slipped and fell in the mosh pit like six or seven times because the floor was wet but just the sheer energy they brought was fantastic also in 2019 they came out with their fifth album Disguise and of course when I saw that, that was happening I had to review the album I do my album review on YouTube so just look for it in the channel I'll actually put a link in the description below for that video as well I did see them a second time in October of 2019 on their uh trick-or-treat tour and that might be the best concert I've seen all year for a couple of reasons. One, that's one that I got the huge cut above my left eye right there. Picture should show up for you guys so you can kind of get a better look at it. I got it at their opener after the burial right before the end of the set. And I was like, well, I'm not leaving now because I want to see Motionless and White. And just the sheer energy from the crowd and how much the band fed off of it. It was one of the most intense impactful and just fun all around concerts I've ever been to. Now going into 2020, I still listen to them a whole lot and I do enjoy their sound and hoping that I get to see them again in 2020 and have them on the Chord Progression Podcast. So let's take a look at their music, shall we? So we're looking at the band's first overall album, their first full-length album, which of course is Creatures. And this album was monumental for the band along with their fans because it had this heavy metalcore and gothic metal sound with some electronica mix in there. So it really was a very unique sound at the time. And it really brought a lot to it because it even changed up the metalcore genre a little bit. And a lot of fans really clenched onto it hard because of the difference in sound and some of the growling lyrics. Taking a look at a couple of the songs that fans really clench onto, of course, we're going to talk about Undead Ahead, Immaculate Misconception, and probably my favorite song off the album, which is Abigail. I've seen him play Abigail twice in concert, and it's just one hell of a time to listen to it and watch Chris and the guys perform it. There's so much behind it, and it's just raw. It's just unfiltered and very emotional. One other song I like in it that I saw a lot of people really were kind of wary on is Cobwebs. Cobwebs has a much different, a little bit of a softer sound to it. 
in terms of how hard it goes. It's just not as hard as, you know, as Macklin Misconception would be, but I still absolutely love the song. So overall, when it comes to Creatures, I know a lot of people really like Creatures. Me being a newer Motionless fan, I like some of the newer stuff more, but when it comes to Creatures, there is a lot on there for me to like, especially if you are a much more driven into metalcore and heavy gothic metal. The second full feature album from Motion of Some White is Infamous, which came out in 2012. And this was the album where the band wanted to break out from potentially being labeled as a generic metalcore band and really focus on their own sound and kind of expand on that. This was very divisive for fans because there were fans that are really into creatures that still are today that want them to stick with the style they had on creatures, so they panned this album. But other people praise this album because they tried something new and they still kind of stuck with a base of what they were, but still trying something new. And there's no better track on this album to really pull that forward than America. Because with America, you're going to get that gothic metal feel to it, but you're not going to get as snarling of vocals from Chris, and you're going to have much more of a hard rock driving feel to it. So they're going to change it up a little bit and really focus on what their sound is going to become. There are other tracks on this album that really do feature that, but I think America is the number one track on this album to really focus in on that. Overall, when it comes to Infamous, this is probably one of my least favorite albums from Motionless and White because there's just no other really tracks that stand out to me outside of America. The third album is Reincarnate from Motionless and White, and this one a lot of fans truly praise and the critics love this because you could really tell that Motionless and White was creating their own sound and that they had it down path. Now, there are a lot of people that really were into Creatures that of course probably left after this album came out, but Again, a lot of people were coming in because they really like the sound that Motionless and White had produced for themselves. Personally, I really don't care that much for Reincarnate comparison to a lot of other fans. And the reason is it just doesn't resonate well with me. I do like the song Dead As, but I do think their second outing on the Graveyard Shift album, which I will talk about, is better. And one of the main reasons why I don't really like this album is because of the titular track, Reincarnate. A lot of people really like that track, and it's just something that really does not stick with me at all, and I really don't care for it all too much. I get a lot of people do, and I understand that. However, again, different musical tastes specifically, and it just doesn't hit me as well. Where a song they would go a little bit more punk rock-ish and go a little bit more black on the album, as Chris has said, with the song Generation Lost. Me being, you know, punk rock to the core, I absolutely love that track. When I heard it live the first time, I was like, I got to find this track and I got to listen to it all the time. So overall, you know, this probably was an album that really didn't hit me at all, but still good. At number four, we have the album that really brought me in and the album that I really think is their best one, which is Graveyard Shift, which came out in 2017. Now, a lot of critics were saying that when the band really came into their own was on the Reincarnate album, and they really praised this album for having Moses of White stick with the signature sound they've created for themselves. And I think where they were saying that happened with Reincarnate, it definitely happened here on Graveyard Shift because you can see some of it happen in some of the great tracks. Take a look at the song 570, which is Chris's favorite track he's ever written because it took a look at the band's journey all throughout from when they first started to the writing of that track. So it covered about 10 years between 2006 and 2016. It goes hard and it has that creature's feel to it, which really fits well for the band. It's kind of like a throwback look into what it could be. Then you take a look at another track that goes a little bit more melodic, especially with the vocals, because it's a little bit more rock driven, a little bit more choppy, but it really creates a different vibe, like a more Manson-ish vibe, but it works out so well with a song like Voices, which is also one of my favorites. Don't worry, there are a couple of snoozers on here that I think, such as Loud, and Necessary Evil. I really don't care for those tracks all that much. You know, we have Dead As 2, and I enjoy that track a lot more than the original Dead As. It's just when I saw it in concert, they just play it so well. And of course, I gotta talk about the final track on the album, which was the second single, Eternally Yours. I think this is the band's best outing to date. It is Chris's second favorite song he's ever written, his favorite song to perform. It goes through so much, and it's so well constructed, which I will get into probably a little bit more when we get to the favorite song portion when I talk about is this going to be on there but it's done so well and it really hits me hard and it just I can listen to it anytime and I absolutely love it now in the end is Graveyard Shift their best album to date I think so
At number five, we have the album Disguise. And this one had a lot of mixed reviews because what the band did was they took their sound and they mixed it with their older sound, a newer sound they come out with, and uh, also their influences that they had within the past. So people really hated it because... You know, it didn't sound like, you know, something like Creatures. It didn't have that just raw emotional itself. People really liked it because of the different directions they took. Or people were indifferent about it because it was like, you know, there are some songs that rock and some songs that are kind of snoozers. That's where I fit in. So take a look at some of the songs. We've got Disguise, which really would fit in on the Graveyard Shift tracks. So they really kind of kept that going. And I really did like that. Code is another one where, honestly, this sounds like it would be perfect for Linkin Park. And you could easily hear Chester Bennington still singing this one. And it would have been amazing to hear him sing on this, you know, if he was still alive today. Rest in peace, Chester Bennington. But in my initial review, I really didn't like this song. As time has gone on, I've absolutely come to love this song. Thoughts and Prayers is my favorite song in the album because it just goes raw with that creature's castle. And it's just unrelenting. It's hard and I absolutely love it. Brand New Numb's another one that was really divisive because they kind of go with more of a poppy rock sound to it. They still keep the motionless sound to it as well, but it's a little bit different. And Another Life is also very different as well because you take a look at Another Life, it's really soft. It really focuses more on Chris's talent as a vocalist. So in the end, this one was rather divisive. I still enjoy the album, but I still think Graveyard Shift's the top one. So what are my likes and dislikes, man? Let me go through my likes first. I absolutely love seeing them perform live because they're two of the best concerts I've ever seen. Just the amount of energy that was at the Sylvie and then the cut I got above my eye at the Rave here in Milwaukee. And that was my probably the best concert I've been to all year in 2019. Oh my God, just the energy they bring and how they feed off of the uh, everybody else's energy about off the crowd. Oh man. Plus you take a look at the set. They really do a lot of that gothic kind of Halloween stuff, but they don't overdo it. It really is done well. Graveyard Shift, I mentioned my favorite album because they take their sound. They can have some fun with it sometimes, but they get real serious with it as well. Again, not necessarily as hard as Creatures, but for someone who isn't as big into like that or super duper metalcore and deathcore kind of style. Yeah, that actually really works for me. And songs like Voices and Eternally Yours are ones I'm always coming back to all the time. And I'm listening to them consistently. I also really enjoy Chris as a front man because he drives off the energy and he's very eccentric when it comes out of it because he does a lot of different things, you know, with the different snarls that he does. He, the classic, bleh, just going all out of it. Absolutely love it. And if you ever see him live, when they play Eternal Earth, he's always bringing out like a bouquet of roses and starts throwing them into the crowd one by one. Absolutely love the move by him. I also love their non-serious demeanor, especially when they were doing stuff with the Disguise uh, tour and with the album. So when they're doing a lot of stuff with the album, you know, they're constantly popping out, having fun with each other. And take a look at some like the stuff they did with like Stranger Things tie-ins with their summer or spring tour and summer tour. They really had a lot of fun with each other. You can really tell it was there. Yo, 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 the bat. You're taller. Let me get your shoulders. I can pop it out and go for help. Excuse me? I'm taller? Since when? Yeah, you clearly have height superiority. Dude, you just don't want to fucking hold me up and smear your perfect makeup. You are clearly taller. Also, if you listen to our Core Progression podcast episode with GFM, Gold Frankincense, and Murt, they'll tell you a story about how they got to meet Chris and how Chris remembers them, who they are, and it's very nice talk. So I absolutely love that from the band as well. And also really like the look because it does give off that Manson vibe that initially will scare you off. But if you just give them a chance, you know, oh man, are these guys good. I absolutely love the sound and I love how it mixes in with the look as well because it's just they're taking what they love and they're making it work for them. And if people are going to be too superficial to kind of let the look overshadow the music, get out of here. Okay, I've got two dislikes when it comes to Moses Light. The first one is the song Reincarnate. Now, I know it's a song that a lot of people love. It's one of their favorites to perform. It's one of their favorites to listen to, but I really just don't care for it as much because I think it just has a little bit more of a bland sound to it in comparison to some of the other songs that they've made, especially like, you know, Generation Lost on the same album, which I really do enjoy. It's just, again, a thing of personal taste. And no, no, um, comments on that when it comes to trashing you about, you know, oh, you guys like reincarnate. I don't boo. No, if you guys like reincarnate, I'm totally fine with it. I'm just giving you my opinion where I just don't really care for it amongst the rest of their catalog. And the other thing was why I don't like, what I don't like about them. Why did I find out about them sooner? What the heck was I thinking? <laughs> 
All right, time to go to my favorite song from the band, and this one is very easy for me. It is Eternally Yours. This is, again, like I said, Chris's second favorite song he's ever written by Mo for Motionless White, and also his favorite to perform. Second favorite song he's ever written, only behind 570. Taking a look at it, when I f when you first hear it, it just stands out with you right away with that hard gothic rock sound, and it just is something that's a little bit different. It has this weird, you know, kind of creepy, but eerily beautiful sound to it. Once the first verse hits and you just hear Chris go full on metalcore with the unclean vocals, it hits you hard and it's just a great change up. But then you get to the chorus and it just a lot more hard rock style, a lot more gothic rock style. And you just like Chris belt out through his vocals, much more clean. And it is done to almost perfection. I really have to mention the second verse here as well, because it starts out with that same kind of style with the first verse as it just goes full metalcore. But halfway through it, it sticks with that kind of sound instrumentally, but Chris goes with clean vocals and it just mixes it so well. You go to the breakdown after the second chorus and <laughs> the bridge is breakdown. Oh man, dude, they just go unrelentingly hard on it and it just mixes so well. Get to the chorus again, beautiful, but the way they end it with the chorus as a much more drawn back version, you let Chris's vocals really shine. It's incredibly eerily beautiful and I absolutely love the track. Now, the reason why it's not hard for me to pick this as my favorite track for the band was because I'm kind of working on a top 10 songs for myself list and Eternally Yours was easily going to be put on there because I can listen to it all the time and still feel the song all the time. I really resonate well with it. It's a very beautiful song and it goes hard at the same time. This is their best song in my opinion and I'd love to hear what you guys think about that. Now time for my overall rating and... Overall, I'm gonna give Motionless and White as a band, eight out of 10. Okay, so why am I giving Motionless and White an eight out of 10? First off, this is the band that basically introduced me to what has become my enjoyment of the metalcore genre. And I've been taking a look at redoing potentially my top 10 bands list, my favorite top 10 bands list. I'm gonna do that every single year. And right now, Motionless and White easily pops into the top 10. I just absolutely love the sound they've had, especially later on on the Graveyard Shift album. I do also enjoy the sound they had on Creatures as well with a couple of their songs because it does go unrelentingly hard and it's a lot easier for me to get into now than it was back then. Absolutely love it. And their live shows are something that is absolutely fantastic. Just the energy, the, the kind of gothic and this creepy kind of set that they put together, but it's not overdone. It is just absolutely beautiful watching perform and just being in that moment. It is fantastic. I love this band, guys, and I can't wait to see what they do more with that sound as they develop it and really focus in on what the Motionless and White sound is. And hopefully in 2020, I get to meet them. We'll see what happens, though. But are they a top 10 band for me for sure right now? As of 2019, the end of it, oh yeah. All right, guys, that's it for me. Thanks for watching the My Song Day Rock 2000 Day YouTube band review of one of my now favorite bands, Motionless in White. If you like it, give me the like. If you dislike it, give me the dislike, but tell me why in the comments, and I want to see what you guys think about Motionless in White. Also, hit that subscribe button. No, 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 no. Hit the one in the corner and the bell icon to be notified when we release videos every single Wednesday. Also, the podcast is coming out every single Tuesday. We'll get to that, though. Let's get rid of those. Also, follow us on our social media accounts like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. That's where you get all your song of the day content, such as updates about what's going on. We'll talk to you guys. We'll ask you questions on Instagram. We'll do our IGTV behind the scenes videos. We'll do our Instagram live streams and we'll do our small band Saturday stuff as well, where you get to get in on the know with all these small bands as well and before they get big. So check us out on there. Link description below. Let's get those out of here. Talk about the co ho 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 progression podcast it's our very own podcast one i hope to get to talk to the guys on and we do a lot there when it comes to talking with these smaller bands that we just talked about for small band saturday where it comes to just you know a little bit more in-depth analysis on certain things and we also get to talk to you the fans so if you want to be on the podcast please let us know and please listen to it because you're going to get a lot of great stuff and again get in the know on those smaller bands you can check out the videos here on youtube now when it comes to us doing the podcast but if you just want to listen we're on spotify Apple Podcasts, 
and Google Play. So go listen to that. And last but not least, if you have an Amazon Alexa and you do not have our Alexa skill enabled, what are you doing? That's the where you can hear the song in its entirety and you can enjoy every bit of it. So you can, you know, listen to it during the day when you get up, before you go to bed, anytime you want for a 24 hour period. The next 24 hours, boom, you get the next song of the day. It's a great way to rediscover old bands, discover new bands, just get in the note and really get your heavy dose of rock and metal every single day. And I want to thank you guys for watching the video and being a part of the My Sunday Rock 2008 community. We're doing some great stuff here and we can't wait for 2020 to come around because we're going to do even better stuff. So for that, this is Kevin from the My Sunday Rock 2008 YouTube channel. Let's see if I get this right. Nope, but see ya!